Hey you, yeah you who clicked on this video, thanks for giving our channel a shot. And if you will, please do us the honor of watching the video all the way through. Appreciate it. Now onto the video. So, Top Gun Maverick. Is it DOA? Does it crash and burn? Or does it soar to new heights? Let's get into it. So, Top Gun Maverick is the sequel to the original 1986 Top Gun starring Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer. Now, in this movie, uh, we get a obviously much older uh, Pete Maverick and, uh, you know, he's still a captain. And uh, it was just interesting that they were able to explain this uh, in this movie. Uh, so essentially, Captain Pete Maverick is now a test pilot uh, for essentially supersonic aircraft um, and he is uh, basically resisting the ever-looming threat of an automated drone uh, type of aircraft um, in a new age of warfare and his basic argument is that no matter you know how sophisticated the drones become they can never really take the place of a human pilot and this theme is rampant throughout the most of the movie now, I'm just going to say this right off the bat. A, this is going to be a spoiler conversation. B, go see this movie. If you haven't seen it already, leave this video, go see it, then come back. Now, let's get into it again. So, with this movie, um, essentially what you have is, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of jingling keys, a lot of nostalgia bait, but I think that it's done in such a respectful way of the original uh, work that I can I can almost overlook, you know, the just screaming nostalgia bait throughout this whole So uh, Maverick is basically doing Maverick stuff, but Maverick stuff gets him in trouble like it did in the original movie. He's, he's you know, hot dogging. He's obviously making bad decisions. Uh, first bad decision that he makes, of course, isn't necessarily him uh, flying the test plane without authorization. First bad decision that he makes is he's warned uh, by his by his uh, friend Hondo, who's actually running the mission control on the ground, that he is to go no higher than uh, Mach 10. Not 10.1, not 10.2, but Mach 10. Maverick knowing this, knowing that uh, a uh, admiral is coming to view his progress uh, with the intentions of shutting him down and looking to find any and all means to shut him down, any excuse, which he already has an excuse, uh, you know, when the film starts, um, decides that once he achieves Mach 10, he is then going to push it even further, going to 10.1, uh, basically frying the I'm sure billion dollar aircraft and crashing. Now, this is foolish on it, you know, by itself, but again, this is Pete Maverick, so you know, we kind of expect this type of behavior even well into his 50s. Now, uh, you would think that this type of behavior would get him uh, dishonorably discharged, but no, uh, a friend of his has called in a favor and actually has a very special mission for him. And that friend, of course, is Iceman Kazansky, Val Kilmer's character from the original movie himself, who has now become, I do believe, a four-star admiral. And, you know, of course, uh, you know, he'd be the person to become an admiral. Of course, he always followed the rules. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. His career trajectory uh, was going to go nowhere but up. So he calls in a, a favor uh, to help his friend, but more importantly, to help the United States and the Navy, because there is a mission that only a manned uh, pilot can do. And unfortunately for the Navy, the only manned pilot uh, that can teach this uh, group of top guns how to basically fly this mission is Pete Maverick himself. So Maverick is uh, commissioned to teach a uh, squadron of already top gun graduates uh, to basically fly an impossible, and I do mean impossible mission. Once you find out the parameters of this mission and it gets deeper into exactly what the mission entails, you realize just how insane it is. Even for someone like Maverick, this mission is just insane. So 
Uh, what happens here is that now we're we're introduced to some characters that we've seen before, including Jennifer Connelly's uh, Penny character, uh, and we also. Uh, you know, we get to see the bar that we saw in the original film uh, where Goose uh, and Maverick, you know, had a lot of great scenes in their first movie. And immediately uh, what we see is that this new group of Top Guns uh, definitely has some resemblance to the original uh, cast, but also, you know, I feel like they have their own flair and I feel like that's really just a, it's a testament to how good this movie is. Now, one knock I do have is that I enjoy seeing Tom Cruise reprising his role as Maverick. However, I feel like you know, this would have been a perfect opportunity uh, to pass the torch because, you know, especially in a movie like this, it doesn't really lend itself to believability, especially given how old uh, Tom Cruise is in this role. I, I felt like, you know, this would have been a great springboard to not only introduce these new characters, but maybe even continue the franchise uh, with them, similar to how Rocky uh, continues the franchise uh, with the Creed. Now, uh, that being said, this is a great movie. So immediately uh, at the bar, we are introduced to our new Top Guns, uh, and that being uh, Glenn Powell playing uh, Hangman. Uh, we have uh, Lewis Pullman, who I actually really enjoyed in Outer Range, uh, playing uh, Bob, which is such a, a character so different from his Red Abbott character in Outer Range. Uh, we have John Hamm, who's playing Cyclone, the Vice Admiral of the base. We have Miles Teller, who is the most important character in this movie. Don't let you know anything fool you. He is the most important character playing Rooster Bradshaw, son of Goose Bradshaw. Uh, so automatically there's a lot of tension um, just in the idea that uh, Goose's son has basically followed in his father's footsteps despite his father's death. Um, anybody that, you know, was a fan of Top Gun, you can argue it all day, all night, but we know that Goose's death was in fact Maverick's fault. I don't care what anybody says, you know, search your feelings, you know it to be true. So, you know, they did a great job with this casting. Miles Teller as Goose's son, they really make him look like the son of Goose. And I really, really, really appreciate that. Uh, other characters, I love Glenn Powell as Hangman. He is such a dick, but he's he can back it up. And I think that's really the most important part. He is what Maverick was in the original movies, except his recklessness is almost justified because he is that good. He is literally the only pilot in this squadron with confirmed kills, which in of itself is a feat given that there have been so few uh, dog fighting scenarios in the in the navy you know post cold war era so he was really cool also um there's a pilot in here um and she is played by monica uh, barbaro and she is uh lieutenant natasha phoenix uh trace phoenix being her call sign i thought she was going to be the most irritating part of this movie and i i, I can really i'm so glad that she's not she is a boss and it's obvious that she has earned her place here. There's, it's not just this, you know, instant best ever, because she's, she's not the best pilot there, but she's one of the best, just like all of these other pilots. All of them are there for a reason. All of them, you know, uh, have earned their place uh, on this elite fighting force that was brought together uh, with the specific mi uh, purpose of completing this mission, but not necessarily to get home alive. And that's really where Maverick comes in. Maverick's whole purpose in this, uh, you know, was not only to train these pilots to be able to fly this mission, but also to get back alive. And that's why uh, Iceman brought him in on this. So, you know, it's obviously, uh, you know, starts off rocky because of the past, which is alluded to later between uh, Rooster Miles Teller's character and Maverick. Now, I do enjoy that they don't really, they don't dumb down Maverick's arrogance or anything like that, but they do soften, um, his brashness because of his age now that you know he he his motivation isn't just the need for speed especially when it's dealing with these young pilots in particular uh the rooster 
character played by Miles Teller, but more so that, you know, he wants these elite group of pilots to succeed him and to also come back alive. And that really puts him at odds, especially with, uh, with John Hamm's Cyclone, because uh, Cyclone wants the mission accomplished, but his first priority is the mission and not necessarily the safety of the pilots. Um, so, you know, just, just watching this was, was fantastic. Now, one thing I was super concerned about because I knew that Val Kilmer was going to be in this movie and anybody that's been following along uh, with current events knows that uh, Val Kilmer has not uh, been well as of late. You know, he's been sick, uh, you know, and... I was just, I was, when they announced that he was going to be in the movie, I was wondering how they were going to treat his character. And they, they did the utmost to treat his character with respect and treat the actor with care. Um, and, but it's really sad uh, because, you know, a lot of people like Iceman from the original movies. And, you know, to see him in the state that he's in, his wife is obviously keeping a secret from the rest of the Navy that he is, in fact, terminally ill um, from a bout of cancer to the point where talking is painful for him and he has to type out his words when speaking to Maverick and yet even though he is not necessarily speaking for most of this scene his ability to act with his emotions uh, non-verbally just is a testament to how great an actor about them is and I'm telling you not a I was dry in the house when he ultimately uh, does not get to see the end of this mission and dies prior to uh, the mission being carried out. So uh, what was, you know, the best parts of this movie, uh, the flight scenes, the, the special effects, they, they spared no expense. They are amazing. And just integrating a lot of the newer uh, aircraft into this movie. And really, I, I really respect them for the ability for them to admit that the United States, uh, as far as their aviation ability has and their technology has fallen behind uh, the rest of the world. However, I do have to take off some marks because in this film, they definitely shy away from telling you specifically what country they're they're going up against or what faction they definitely are trying to be as vague as possible so as not to upset anyone but you know i mean what are you going to do with this climate i you know i get it i i really do. uh so that being said uh, looking at the story i mean it's not the best story ever but it it's it's top gun you're not really expecting the story to make all the sense in the world but just you know getting to see that or having them explain the history between Rooster uh, and uh, Maverick is very interesting. And the, the callbacks to Goose, I thought, were just so awesome. Now, that being said, there are some issues, especially with the jingling of the keys, uh, you know, callbacks to, you know, great balls of fire and things like that. Just they didn't seem necessarily out of place, but they did seem a little forced. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, so I can't really complain too much about it. Uh, I, this, the, the, this movie was definitely worth it. I'm going to go see it again. I definitely enjoyed uh, what I saw. I enjoyed the final uh, mission and just the tension that was being brought to the screen as I was watching it. It was amazing. And I really hope that somehow they can continue this franchise. Um, uh, even though, you know, it might not necessarily have Tom Cruise in it, I think that they can still incorporate him in it, but I would love to see the younger pilots kind of take the reins and take the franchise and make it their own, especially Miles Teller's uh, Rooster character and the Hangman character and Phoenix. Like, I just love that little trio. Uh, also, great uh, acting by the actor that plays uh, Payback. I really enjoyed him. Uh, he's played by a uh, gentleman by the name of Jay Ellis. And I, I enjoyed his performance as well. So I really just, I really want to see this, you know, go on in some form, even if it's like a, a streaming show, uh, although I really would like it to continue on in its cinematic form. And I think that it's going to make more than enough money for that to happen. But you guys, let me know what you guys thought about uh, Top Gun Maverick, uh, whether or not you thought the performances were good. Um, me personally, like I said, I love this movie and I can't recommend it enough. Uh, that means, hey guys, we're going to see you on the next one. 8-Bit Heroes out. Peace.
want to give a big 8-bit heroes welcome to Ariane C. Paramasavam. Uh, welcome to the 8-bit heroes family. Big shouts out to you. If you'd like to give a shout out on the channel, then hit that like button. Maybe share it with a couple of friends and do us the biggest honor of all and subscribe to the channel so you can join the 8-bit heroes family. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when our new videos come out.